Hello and welcome to ANC Decides, the show that gives you up-to-the-minute reports, commentary and analysis building up to the ANC's December elective conference. I'm your host, Mfundo Mabalan. Let's take a look at what's making headlines. Sir Ramaphosa bucks the trend and declares running mate outright. ANC lashes out at leaders declaring leadership slates before nomination processes for December are concluded. KZN PEC disputes continue over ANC branch general meetings. Claims of branches being disbanded for officials being removed from their positions over nominations. And disgruntled Northern Cape ANC members approach court about the newly elected provincial structure. Zamani Sol emerged as the new chairperson at the Provincial Congress. ANC presidential candidate Sir Ramaphosa has announced his team ahead of the nominations process being concluded. This move has received mixed reviews. Lemukhang Foke filed this report for us. ANC presidential hopeful Cyril Ramaphosa has upped the ante in his bid for the top job. Ramaphosa has gone for broke, choosing to buck the trend and reveal his running mates. Are supporting Comrade Senzo Mkunu, who is Secretary General of the African National Congress. Comrade Naledi Pando, Abe Deputy President wa African National Congress. Comrade Gwede Mantashe, Abe National Chairperson wa Rena wa ANC. Comrade Paul Mashatile, Abe Treasurer General wa African National Congress. Team Erinyangangwe Aha, Kiona Ribizangor is the winning team. Kiona team Eta Shumang. African National Congress. Ramaphosa hit the ground running in Vembe, a region which is known to have fully backed him, with his name coming up in the majority of branches. President, Atope Commission of Inquiry. And <laughs> The mandate has been clear. Go to conference, go and vote Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa as the president of the ANC. That has been the, the mandate. Our delegates are solid and we are very happy about that. Meanwhile, the majority of Ramaphosa supporters in Limpopo have already started celebrating his victory even before the nominations process is concluded. <laughs> We want Ramos Posa to come and save this organization because it's dying. We are not going to take Nkosa Zana because we are tired of the corruption of Kukta. The SACP is Kukune. We have taken the resolution that we are supporting Mr. Ramaphosa. Just weeks away from the elective conference, the succession race has indeed gained momentum, with Ramaphosa concluding his campaign trail in Limpopo with an announcement of his official slate. The shape and form of the race has taken a new turn. Lemohang Fulke 4, ANN 7, Sikukune. Now here's what ANC spokesperson Zizi Godwa had to say about Ramaphosa's announcement. During the National General Council of 2015, held in Johannesburg, one of the issues we had committed ourselves as an organization is to abolish slates, because we understood at that time, as we understand it now, that slates were very dangerous for the African National Congress, especially it undermines our efforts to foster unity in the organization. That's number one. Secondly, we also said we reaffirm the centrality of the branch of the ANC as a basic unit that the nomination and the election of the ANC leadership is a sole reserve right 
of branches of the ANC, and therefore branches must be allowed without being influenced, particularly by those in infrastructures, to influence in terms of who they think must be the leader of the African National Congress. And we think these public pronouncements about lineups, they fly against that commitment and the resolutions we took as an organization. Hence, we think in the statement we issued today, we remind them all in Senate, including the deputy president, that to make pronouncements even ahead of nomination of branches, it is actually against the resolution and the commitment that we have made as an organization. We now cross over to our reporter, Lemokhang Foke, who's out in Bombela. Lemokhang, a warm welcome to you. Now, an interesting turn of events uh, this past weekend politically in the place of the Rising Sun, uh, Sir Ramaphosa's campaign trail. Can you just take us through it? Mm. A very good afternoon to you, Mfundo, and thank you very much indeed, as you have indicated. We are coming live from Mbombela in Bumalanga. <laughs> and just coming from Limpopo, where uh, Silver Ramaphosa concluded his campaign trail, and of course making that uh, announcement of his official slate. And so for now, we still keep those reactions coming. I have with me uh, the SACP provincial uh, chairperson, Lucky Mbuyane, just to unpack his thoughts on, on, on where they stand as the SACP in the province, Regarding this new announcement, thank you so much, Ndate Mbuyane, for joining us. What do you make of uh, uh, Sir Ramaphosa announcing his uh, slate, and uh, what does that say about uh, the ANC in the province? How would that, the, a, the SACP, sorry, in the province, and how would that uh, in, be imposing uh, on the branches? Thank you very much, Leo Khan. And I uh, want to thank the AN7 for giving us this platform to come and articulate our position as a South African Communist Party in Pumalanga province. We hear many people speak about what uh, Comrade Cyril said in, in Limpompo. But we must indicate that we are a South African Communist Party. We are an alliance partner of the African National Congress. We are not a subcommittee of a branch of the ANC. So in some other issues that have got to do with the ANC conference, as the party, we are not going to comment, to, you know, we will we, we'll rather speak about the traditions as a matter of principle in the whole processes of the ANC. Because what Cyril have said in, in, in Limpombo, others are saying it, it is his democratic right to say what he said. Others are saying a number of things. But as the part, we just want to speak from the principle of saying the ANC, historically since 1949, we saw deputy presidents become presidents of the ANC. So also in this case, we think that the ANC have got to follow that tradition, especially if the ANC want to unite itself. It must follow the matter of tradition so as the, the, the conference is concluded correctly. But uh, further than that, I think all what you can say is that there are many pronouncements in the ANC which are wrong. And we think the conference that is going to sit in December must be able to sit down and look all those foreign tendencies, the slates, the money politics, factionalism, patronage. We think that the conference in December will be very much relevant to sit down and look as to say, how best can we practically resolve all, all, all of these problems? Because now we're hearing rhetorics. A person will say this the following day is doing the, the, the other thing. Other structures, the Women's League, the Youth League will pronounce, MK veterans will pronounce, the president himself will go and find himself deep into factions of the ANC. So we think the ANC as an organization must go to the conference and uh, come up with a practical solution that is going to take the ANC forward. Well, thank you very much. That was Lucky Mbuyani, who's the chairperson of the SACP in the uh, Mpumalanga province. I will now move on to my second analyst. His name is uh, Mbuso Tubati from Nombuso Communications Group. Mbuso, thank you so much for speaking to us. It always is a pleasure to speak to you. But let's just unpack what is currently happening now. And also, you know, specifically talking about where this puts David Mabuza. We do know that coming out of Mpumalanga, there were some prospects of, ha of having him as a deputy president. But now, Surah Ramaphosa and announcing his preferred slate without Mabuza. How do you make uh, of, of those turnouts? Well, uh, Lebohang, obviously people will be shaken by this move. They, they, they saw an opportunity uh, for Mabuza to emerge as deputy president on either the NDZ faction or that of Suru Ramaphosa, the CR-17. Now, given what has happened, the latest development that happened in Limpopo, it leaves Mabuza with only one person, one faction that of NDZ, Lamin Zoom.
So this is a big challenge from Pumalanga ANC, a big challenge from Abuza himself. He's interested in being a deputy president. He's interested in having the province rallying behind him. However, it is not guaranteed that all structures of the ANC, or delegates rather, going to the conference in Nazarek, will indeed make sure that his preferred, in this case, the Laminizuma faction, will emerge or they will vote for that faction. Now, the ANC have also spoken out against uh, candidates uh, releasing names such as what we've seen uh, with Sir Ramaphosa. But do you think that uh, this is him imposing himself on branches or is it mere lobbying at this point? I mean, I suppose anything can ha happen just weeks before the conference. But what do we make of it? Well, from where I'm sitting as an analyst, as a person, as a scholar, there is surely nothing wrong about a politician, particularly in this current juncture. The campaigning trail has been opened. People are going visiting various regions, various provinces of the country, lobbying, meeting behind closed doors, and publicly engaging masses to lobby uh, their support. Surely this of Ramaphosa is one of those. He's just used a different tactic. President Zuma, prior to emerging as the president of the country and the president of the ANC, he used a different one. Of course, he used emotional blackmail. He would use different ways of engaging people to support him. However, those of us were able to see that the president wants to ascend to the highest position in the ANC. Ramaphosa openly came out clean, saying, look, I am here, I want to serve you, I am your man, and I would love to work with people who will champion your interest. Therefore, he was able to name those people so that people do understand what uh, the team of Ramaphosa will comprise of. And just lastly, um, Buso, if you can just briefly give us your comment on, you know, what this means for Ramaphosa's campaign, bringing in Naledi Pando as a deputy president, what do you think his chances lie? Well, uh, Naledi Pando, as a person, as a comrade, he's very seasoned, he understands the ANC, he's a, she's a professional, she's somebody who's been there, who's served in various portfolios of the ANC and various portfolios in government. However, there are challenges. Remember that conferences are about numbers. But I can assure you that Naledi has a following. She has people who believe in her. She's a, a credible comrade. She's a very solid individual, very professional. She, she, she has chances to bolster and, and embrace a huge following that will assist Ramaphosa's campaign. Well, thank you very much for your time. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to toss back to you. And those are the views that are coming from Bumalanga uh, based on um, Ramaphosa's t uh, winning team and uh, the announcement that he made yesterday in Limpopo in Sikukune. Back to you. No, thank you very much, Lemo Khang. Now, we're joined in studio today for this very conversation by Dr. Lagima Tebula, a policy analyst from Twane Think Foundation. We're also joined by socio-political analyst Oliver Do Dixon. Uh, panel, or at least for you now, at least welcome, Dr. Matebula. Jamila, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. Now, we would say that this is the biggest news to come out of the weekend, the official slate by Sir Ramaphosa. But what do you make of the inclusion of uh, Naledi Pando as, for, for the deputy president position? Look, I think the, the, the contest between Cyril and Kosazana Zuma obliges him to also speak to the women in the ANC. I think that's my first comment on that. But also, I think by pulling in Naledi Pando, who is a seasoned uh, leader of the ANC, uh, Cyril is also talking to the stalwarts, to the old people in the ANC, to the people that were in exile, that they are also part of the future with him. But over and above that, I think he's, uh, he's also, I think he's also uh, trying to water down the tsunami cohort. Because remember, he, he is still seen as a person that is still relying on those people that were actually responsible for putting President Zuma in Pulukwani later, uh, earlier on to be who he is. And those people are found in his team. So in his core team, what he has done now, I think he has only left Gwede Mantashe from that tsunami cohort. Mm -hmm. But some could then still say that if we had to take it to, to what was happening in Parliament, Naledi Pando was one of those members as well who defended the president. So if you're talking about perhaps distancing yourself from Zuma or those who defended Zuma in Parliament, she spoke. Unless you're going to confine it and say she's a disciplined member, she was critical behind closed doors. But when it came to a time of uh, somehow coming together publicly, 
she would then somehow come and, and unite behind the president? Naledi is a seasoned politician and she's very intellectual. So she might have reasoned when she voted with Jacob Zuma in parliament, the correctness of doing that at that time. And she might have also reasoned the correctness of agreeing to be on Zuma's slate. But I think what, what we need to read out of Naledi Pando is that as a woman, she's, she, she's a different politician. I think she's made of a different silk. However, she needs to manage that as a woman, she's not used to actually garner the support of the Women's League. She's genuinely put there because of her qualities and what she can contribute to the mm -hmm. civil team. Now that is the key question perhaps to bring in Oliver. They're welcome. Oliver, she has no constituency. That's what everybody's been saying this mm. past Sunday. So what does it mean? Mm. Is Ramaphosa trying to put forward a credible slate but possibly going to lose at the end of this because she doesn't come with numbers? Uh, quite importantly, we have to ask ourselves the question about just because Cyril Ramaphosa is not a, a dumb politician, very smart politician. So is Naledi Pando uh, and a number of people in that slate. And when you put together a slate, you often put together a slate that will consolidate branch level support for, for you. Uh, Naledi Pando has very little such branch level support. Compare that to, for instance, uh, Duduzane, uh, sorry. Uh, Premier David Mabuza. David Mabuza. Who maybe uh, could have uh, said he could have wooed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, who, who has incredible support in, 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 in Mbumalanga. Compare that, for instance, to um, uh, what's happening with ACE in the Free State, him having incredible branch level support over there. So we have to ask ourselves, why would uh, Deputy President Soto Ramaphosa put someone on his slate who has very little branch level support, but has the right posture for a national appeal, right? And this is, I think, lends a lot towards uh, the reconciliation process that they call themselves uh, in the ANC about uh, driving unity. Right, so while, uh, while Naledi Pando may not be able to consolidate branch level support, what she has in the, in the organization is immense credibility. Credibility. She's not factional. She's not factional, well, but credibility that indicates a level of attempt to want to bring about unity. So she strikes me as the sort of politician that can sit with both sides and really deliberate the direction of the organization. Mm -hmm. now, and that shows a level question. of serious. So perhaps Sir Ramaphosa cares more about uniting the ANC than he actually cares about winning a conference. Mm -hmm. So what about those that believe in him, Oliver? That those that believe in him and want to see him uh, become president of even South Africa, they have a problem now that he's not playing the game right as it should be played. Because here, Naledi Pando by some is seen as great for government that she would work for 2019, but is she great for the party? That yeah. can they really, is she somebody that is uh, charismatic? Uh, as you say, she doesn't have that branch support. So to get past winning in the ANC, is she still the right person? This is largely speculative. We're going to have to speculate a lot of here with, because we have very little information just about who she's been speaking to, what she's been saying to them, and why Sarah Ramaphosa thought he is a perfect fit to deputize. Right? So we, we're going to have to wait for her to actually come about and say something, whether or not what, what her plans are in terms of supporting this particular slate. Uh, similarly, how we're waiting for uh, Paul Mashatine to come up forth and give us exactly the same sort of assurance uh, that he's definitely serious about this. Because we don't want a situation where people withdraw on the last day, on the day of voting at a conference, like we saw Tokyo Sukhale do uh, in, in, in the last elective conference in Mangahong. Mm -hmm. No, certainly worth a broader conversation. I also want to touch on the age here. I know she's 63, and we've got Kosazana, who's 68. But let's quickly just move to Kaiser 10. We'll be back in this conversation. Now, tensions over nominations continue to escalate in KwaZulu-Natal, ANC structures. Some members claim the process is being rigged for particular outcomes. The legitimacy of ANC presidential candidate in Kosazana Tlamini Zuma's Durban branch is under scrutiny. Now, this comes after allegations that it was disbanded for not endorsing her. However, sources say the branch had been disbanded before the nominations process even started. There are also claims of a branch secretary who was removed from his post for backing Cyril Ramaphosa. Meanwhile, the claims of vote rigging raise several questions about the transparency of the process and whether branches can accept democratic outcomes. 50 plus one of members must be present in the meeting, but this is not happening. In many of these branches, we have lost grievances with the Electoral Commission and the Office of the Secretary General, uh, as it were. 
The guidelines further instruct that the PGMs will be supervised by members of parliament, members of the provincial legislature, and members of the National Executive Committee. But this is not happening. Instead, Youth League and other people who do not belong to any structures preside. It is not surprising that the illegitimate PEC stripped some regions, including the Lower South Coast, of its political powers to manipulate conference processes. We have had three weeks of branch nominations in the province, and we are delighted of the positive outcome, especially in the regions like Far North, Abatulusi, Nkosi Pambata, and Emalatlini. It must be noted, though, that in regions like Eteguini, Moses Mapita, and Herikwala, we have seen unprecedented acts of hooliganism and outright fraud in the branch general meetings, where members with valid membership are removed from the role of members. We now cross over to our reporter, Nomusa Pumula, who's out in Kezatin. Nomusa, a warm welcome to you. Now, we've been reporting on Ward 32 for a while now. Uh, supposedly, the branch members say they've been victimized for preferring Cyril Ramaphosa. What exactly is happening there? Well, good evening, Fundo, and good evening to our viewers. What 32, which is the ward for Dr. Nkosa Zanilamini Zuma, where she is affiliated at, has been reported to be uh, to be operating on a parallel structure. They are the, they are those that uh, belong to the structure that was disbanded last year in December, according to the regional secretary, as well as the task team that was appointed by the region to further or, or to make sure that things run smoothly within the branch and also make sure that it takes the branch to the next AGM where they can elect a proper and legitimate structure. However, there has been conflict or there has been uh, problems between these two structures or the three structures rather, which is the task team, the REC as well as the disbanded BEC, where you see the disbanded BEC calling meetings for a number of times without, a, uh, no, without the knowledge of the REC, where, where the REC have said that they've reprimanded them a number of times. However, they call continuously do that, confusing members of that branch. They've also mentioned that they've taken the matter up to the REC, up to the PEC rather, so that the PEC can give guidance as to what exactly should be done with what 32 because now there is, there are those few, according to the regional secretary, Begin Duli, that belong to the PEC that is disbanded, that were disbanded based on issues that they were being uh, rebellious, they were not um, uh, following processes of the ANC and also they were being unruly. He cited three incidents that took place last year in 2016 already where he says the campaigns had not started but already this branch was becoming unruly where they went to the branch to campaign for local government elections. However, they were disrupted by these uh, uh, few BEC members that, that were there at the time. At some point they even destroyed the banner of the African National Congress which is the property of the ANC but right now the matter is in the hands of the PEC where the PEC will then decide as to what should really happen with what they did to. Dr. Musa, thank you very much. We'll speak as days progress. Now, back to the studio. Doctor, your take again, just to take you back to the age thing. A number of people still are concerned that we're seeing a lot of, of, of these members of the ANC. You talked about her resonating with the Star Wars and so forth. But if you look at that slate, there's nobody that is young. And we know that South Africa is made up of mostly the youth in this country. So who will be championing the youth's agenda? The Possibly in this group, it might be Paul. Whether he's a youth or what, one is not he sure. He no longer is. Yeah, but um, I think this thing of youth in leadership, I think might be overplayed. You need to look at the character of the youth in the ANC and say, have we produced enough youth leadership in the ANC Youth League that can be ready to take over this task. And whose failure is that? Because the good leaders, is, 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 good leaders must be working themselves out of positions daily. If you cannot identify somebody that can take over from you, you're a bad leader. That's why I'm saying that it might be a function of that, that the leadership of the ANC is realizing that it might have failed to produce a credible youth leadership. I mean, we all know that a, a full generation of youth has been wiped out uh, in terms of the whole EFF cohort that has gone to the EFF. 
There's a full generation that has been wiped out. There's a new generation that is coming. Whether it is ready to take on now or what, it's an academic question. But what I want to, 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 to try and point out was Nkosa Zana and Naledi Pando age, age challenge and the serial age challenge. Mm -hmm. the, the truth of the matter is that the country where it is, it probably still needs a much more mature person to lead at the president's level and deputy president level. I would agree with you when you say they should have introduced somebody younger, maybe at the level of the secretary. But I see that Cyril has not announced a deputy secretary. Yes. I think that might be uh, the, the, the space that he probably is looking at putting uh, for, for a youth there. It, it's interesting that he did not go mm -hmm. to, to that level. And there's also a debate that the constitution might be amended to increase the number of the top uh, six to say top eight, and that might create opportunities for youth. So, and something else that I wanted to comment about, there's still going to be horse trading towards the conference. Cyril's slate might also be amended as the host trading. Which is interesting get, yeah, because many were yeah, saying yeah, it was premature trading, yeah, yeah, actually to have brought it up. Tougher. Unfortunately, we've run out of time yeah. today. We've had so many interviews, but thank you gentlemen for joining us. And lastly, here's this week's poll question. The question this week is, is white monopoly capital a reality in South African economy? You can take part in our survey on our website and social media platforms. Our, web, our Twitter account is, is at ANN7TV. Please, we'd like to hear from you. And that's where we end it today. Until next time.